My name is Phil Guyman. I was a pro cyclist for 10 years. But at the end of 2016, I realized that I had to quit racing and get a job. I couldn't be the best at pro cycling, so I've decided to be the absolute worst at retiring. All right, we're here in St. Petersburg, Florida. Uh, flew in last night, and I came here, so I'm three hours off on the time zones. Um, but, uh, so I had some coffee, and I'm kind of awake. And I found this lovely cafe. This is the Wooden Rooster Cafe, uh, which is, it's kind of a dick joke. I don't know if, I don't know what we're dealing with that. Um, the only flaw that, the, I had a crepe. I ate it before you could get here to film it, but it was delicious. The only flaw with this place is what's next door is this building where I don't know what this building is, but they're really angry. They're, they're very careful about their plants. So first they explained that I was, I couldn't put my bike in there that wasn't touching any plants. Um, maybe they don't like bikes, but uh, and then and then I, I with a little bit of with a little bit of snark I, I moved my bike to where they seemed to want it, and the guy then came back and took photos. And you can see my my backpack strap is still in the plant bed, and he took photos of that to send to the property manager. Um, <laughs> so so that's that's how it, it is in the bed. He's right. The man has a point. Um, so. So part of me, and then when I went inside, the, the, the cafe people were sort of like, oh yeah, they're always like that, I'm sorry. So part of me wanted to just take this whole episode and just make a documentary about this four inches of plant space um, and interview both sides and really get to the bottom of it and see what, maybe these are special plants. I'm not, I'm not a, what's a plant? Botanist? Scientist? Botanist, I'm definitely not a botanist. <laughs> I don't even know what it is. I was gonna say a plantologist. Um, but we're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. We're here in Florida. We're going to enjoy ourselves. I'm finally in a land where I'm not the only one who's retired. Um, and I've, I've, I lived in Florida for a long time, and I haven't done much riding in Tampa, and I'm excited today to be guided by my old friend David Guttenplan, who we, we were teammates, we were roommates, we were best friends. Uh, we haven't seen each other in a very long time, and, uh, and now he kind of lives down here, and he's going to show me going to show me his favorite roads. We're going to go on a tour of, of Claremont, which is uh, which is a little bit hour outside. So we'll do some St. Pete action, we'll do some Tampa riding, but uh, but today the, the big day for best retirement ever is Claremont, Florida. This is for old time's sake, but it wouldn't be a trip to... Florida isn't really the south, but it's kind of the south. It's enough that I need sweet tea. So we found uh, we're in Chick-fil-A. Also, it wouldn't be Florida if you didn't enter a giant air-conditioned mall. That's important. All right, so where we're headed is, is Claremont, Florida. So that's kind of like, I would say of all of Florida, that's the that's the cycling mecca. That's where people go to ride bikes. Well, there's lots of great places to ride here, believe it or not, but but Claremont is the spot. Um, the, a lot of like pro triathletes end up here, uh, and and there's there's one the the highest natural point in Florida is here. So that's that's we do have a climb today, and we're going for it. North Florida is the south. So like North Florida is country. So, you know, the, the, the chewing tobacco and the Southern accent and, and all that stuff. Like that was where I went to school. Um, and then if you go, and then you can, the more south you go, the less south it is in Florida. So like once you hit Orlando is kind of the line and Tampa I feel like is the line too. Once you get south of that, you're in the north and now it's just like retired people from New York. And then if you go further south, you're in Cuba. Like, like land is just a lot of Cuba. Northern Cuba. Yeah, north exactly. Um, so, so Claremont is in between, right? Well, it's outside of Orlando, so it's not it's not Orlando. So it's right. it's basically country. It's country. I knew I met David when I was, uh, I was 18 or 19, one of those freshmen at the University of Florida. Um, I remember going on like one of the the college team rides and. And there was this, like, I, that week I had met a Cat 3 for the first time. I had never raced yet. And I met a guy who was a Cat 3, it's Peter Sims. And I was like, holy He's... crap, that guy's a Cat 3. That's freaking amazing. And I was so, I was starstruck. And then, uh, and I met a ride, I met on a ride, I met this guy, David Guttenplan, who was a Cat 1, you guys. Cat 1, 18 years old, Cat 1, he had a, he had a, he had a Bianchi with Topolino wheels. I remember everything about you from that moment. Me too, you had a t-shirt on. Right, so so now, so that's my first impression of David, was this like beautiful young stallion of a bike racer. And now, how, how did I come off to you, David? How did I go that day? 
I mean, you were really skinny and you like to ride to cities. And they could be 100 miles away. You didn't care. You just wanted to ride to a city as far wanted, away as yeah, you could. Yeah, I would go to Cedar Key from Gainesville and back. That was my ride. And that was your thing. And I was like, I well, I mean, if he can ride 100 and something miles without really caring, I mean, he's good. And he's wearing a t-shirt. We're here. This is this is the famous, this is the base of Sugarloaf Mountain where we're parking. We're going to do a loop. Uh, I went sleeveless today. This is, well, it's not, I don't know if it counts as sleeveless if it's not a cutoff. This is, it's like, it's like a sleeveless jersey, but they already made it that way. So it's kind of cheating. Buy a long sleeve jersey or a sleeve jersey and cut the sleeves. But for now, I'm doing it the, the weirdo way. I'm like a triathlete today. Just fitting for Claremont. Um, what, so, so, Gut, what's the, what's the ride plan? Uh, we're going to go try to find some alligators, some limestone. We're in Florida. Mm -hmm. Seems important that we go off-road a little bit. Um, we're going to hit the, the epic climb. And later we're going to smash that, but first, this is best retirement ever. That looks like worst retirement ever, but best retirement ever, we're just going to go for a bike ride right now. Well, tell us about, remember the first ride that we did together and how that ended for me? You have to tell them. So I was pretty nice to you the whole you ride, I thought. Nice. I was like very encouraging, trying to like, you know, there's potential here. <laughs> but there came a point where we got on campus where there's these like uh, barriers, I guess, for a little cement thing that blocks off for the, the buses. So the yeah. buses, in theory, can't run over the pedestrians in the turn on campus. And I mean, I've seen them for years. Like, I'd only been there for a month, so a month. They don't have those in Atlanta, where I was from. But I, I knew you don't want to hit those. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. So <laughs> what did I do? Phil, I guess didn't <laughs> and, and I was almost home it was late I was hungry whatever I wanted to get home and Phil may or may not have fallen over and I didn't stop I absolutely crashed on the cement thing and I jumped in and 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 this this young stud of a stallion who I was like crap he saw me he, like for sure he saw me and then I was super embarrassed but David had he had he knew he knew that I was okay, but he had the emotional intelligence to act like he didn't see me. Like he kept writing, like that's how, like honestly, the, the, a nice, it, would, it would seem like a nice thing to do would be to stop and make sure I'm okay, but the nicest thing you could do is know I'm okay and act like you didn't see it. And that's who you are, honestly, like I appreciate it. I just, I was like, he's fine. I was fine. I just had a little rest from back up, and at the scant 11 years later, I was crashing at Perry Roubaix. <laughs> You just got, you know, this is your Spanish moss. It's, uh, it's flat. It's flat. A lot of pickup trucks. So far, there's no road rage. And, uh, it's a lovely day. 83 degrees. 83 degrees. We got some swamps. Florida's got a lot of swamps. This is, we're in Lake County. And that's probably why they call it that. It's a bunch of lakes. We've got a bike path. There's a bike path along whatever this road is. So best retirement ever stops for, for cool birds. Are these the Rogers family birds? Do we know, what kind of birds are these? Blue crane maybe? Blue crane. I think. <laughs> We're gonna look it up. We're gonna look it up. But that's a new rule. Worst time ever stops for birds. Right guys? Yeah. I was talking to them. So what do you do? What do you do now? What's like how what's the life of a criterium? Like you do everything. You're a hustler. I got the whole training for being a bike racer thing. Mm -hmm. Got the coaching business. So I got a bunch of coaching clients. And then running the team, which is not easy because I've got another 15 guys all over the country. So David runs like an elite amateur team that does all the big American races and uh, so this is everybody like they they need a new bike they call you they got the they need the clothing they call you you're you're managing a bunch of people. It's uh I don't know how you do it. I'm exhausted I just manage myself. I love racing bikes more than anything. I love having the flexibility to able to chase the races I want to chase and not race if I don't want to race. I mean, I raced pro for 
three years and it was it was hard having a team that's always telling you, you gotta be here and there and everything so you know I can understand like yeah. why you retired because I I mean yeah I'm busy and doing all sorts well, of stuff. Well that's so much better when you retire and do the same thing but because you like it. <laughs> exactly. You didn't so, even know you were retired but you are technically. So I basically retired in 2000 started riding and we neither of us remembered to bring water bottles well I brought two but I drank one on the way here because it's Florida and it's humid as hell um, but we knew this was here this is the top of Sugarloaf Mountain a kind stranger has put up a water thing and then a donation request for Hope for the Warriors uh, shout out to show them on the mail on their name on there shout out to what was the name Feinstein's Finstad Finstad Harry and Janice. shout out shout out to them for the free water for years and donate to hope for the for warriors. as long as we can it. remember i'm gonna i'm gonna donate we're gonna put a fiver in there all right that's for free water here thank you guys move. there were so many races in florida it was just the two of us would get away together we were teammates but like we would just attack everybody until it was just the two of us left we went one two in like how many races 25 races probably in a few years yeah, like and there was there race. was there was one year where we both fought over the win two or three separate times yeah. and dropped people out of the break with us while we argued yeah, we about who was gonna win. It happened <laughs> so to the Irish guy David. Yeah, and the time that time act. That's why. So we're like, and then time became way better than both of us. Both of us. That's fair. Yeah. Um, so we uh, we'd be we'd be in the breakaway together, and then we'd have to decide who gets to win because we're not gonna like. Well, A, we can't race against each other because he would out sprint me. But we would just, we wouldn't, we wouldn't be friendly about it, but it would be an argument. I remember one time at the Gainesville Criterium, where, which was our hometown, uh, where we're gone. It was just the two of us. And, and I was like, it's like five laps ago. I'm like, all right, man, who's going to win today? Like, I think it's my turn. And Dave was like, so my parents are here. <laughs> I was like, damn it, his parents are here. We got to let him win in front of his parents. <laughs> What does Cajun boiled mean? Spicy. 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 Okay. You want a big cup or a little bit? Let's do a little cup and share it. Okay. See, NBC beat us to this this scoop of the boiled peanuts. Boiled peanuts on the side of the road is that's some Florida stuff. That's what we do here. This is this is not our first time boiled peanut together, is it, David? Mm mm. mm, -mm. I think boiled peanuts are going to be good for our stomachs already. Uh, yeah, I don't, whatever. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Yes, yeah, sir. Good stuff right there. Oh, there's corn in there. What else is in there? Potatoes, oh corn, olives. That is not boiled. This is, yeah, the Gage, Cajun man. Holy moly. Yeah, I got potatoes. This is the Mac Daddy's boiled peanuts I've ever seen. Tomatoes. How much for the cup? $3.50. $3.50. Perfect. Thank you. All right. This is a big. I just want you guys to know he was asleep when we pulled up here. I didn't get the camera out in time, but that guy was sleeping in his chair. It's great. And you got jalapenos in there. This just changed the game. <laughs> a boiled peanut. Yeah, I good too. There's you. You got it, David. Oh. Your change. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I do remember a time we had boiled peanuts at the Pearl Country Store in Gainesville, Florida. And we were littering the shells all over the sidewalk. And we weren't thinking about it, because that's what you do. That's what we thought you did. Oh, yeah. And then we learned that you don't do that. That was our favorite store, too. So I mean, we definitely didn't want to upset anybody. No, we, we, we went there like a few times a week. <laughs> Look at this. They had good barbecue, too. I, I got the best bowl of peanuts. Yeah, they're real soft. Mm. Just put a bunch of spices and salt, right? Jalapeno sauce. Oh, it is good. It's yeah, good. it is spicy. It is kind of spicy. Not gonna lie. All right, thank you. 
We're out of here. I already thanked him off camera, so that was a redundant on camera thank you, because it'd be weird if we just rode away and didn't thank him, you know? Last time we had like a really long talk. We talked, you called me after my dad died. Um, and then at some point, I think a little bit before that was, when was your, when was your really bad crash? March 1st, 2016. Say like an alcoholic. So, yeah, it was almost been something. two years. So do you remember what happened? Yeah, I was just, I'd ridden all day. I went home. I had like 30 minutes to like get ready because I was going to go ride to a bike race <laughs> after riding all day. As you do the usual thing. And I don't know, I left, uh, the, I live on the probably the worst road that you could live on in Tampa, Gulf to Bay. So I had just left. It was rush hour, 5.15, when the road's full of traffic, three ways, both ways, full of cars. And a car was coming the other direction, turning left into an apartment complex, half a mile from my house. I didn't see him. They didn't see me. I feel like I remember there being a really big truck, you know? Yeah. And it was just all I really remember was like being dragged into the parking lot, like past the sidewalk, everything, and just, uh, you know, I have like an image in the ambulance yeah. where I was like, my jaw's broken, everything's screwed up, but I was like, I'm gonna be okay. Yeah. There was no pain. No pain, I don't have any pain. Oh, you had morphine, that's why. No, no, I mean, it was, I was that screwed up that I didn't oh, have any feeling. Okay. So I just had a I mental had to, I, image. I it was morphine, and I thought I was dead. I just like, but I distinctly remember, okay, my legs work, uh, my that's jaw's broken, yeah. and then lights out. That was, that was in the ambulance. I mean, that's, yeah, yeah. that's how little I remember. When I finally came to being conscious, one of the very first things is my girlfriend showing me this GoFundMe type of page that had been set up to help cover my medical bills. Yeah. That all of everyone that I knew had contributed to, shared, and it was just like what should have been the worst experience of my life. It was like, holy crap, all the love and support from the cycling community. Yeah. It just basically put me on this like mission of just trying to do good and be a better person and send all the love I can and help anyone and everyone that I possibly can for the rest of my life, be better, be happy. Just that's sort of been my mission to inspire. It's just like the love that was sent out to me, I'll never forget. It's got you know, it's right there. We're at the bottom of, of what? Where are we, dude? Sugarloaf Mountain. Sugarloaf Mountain, Claremont, Florida. This is uh this is the highest natural point in Florida. So how like tell me how tough this climb is. Like what's everyone like people were emailing me like, dude, you've gotta for worst driving ever, you've gotta come check out Sugarloaf Mountain in Florida, you've gotta hit this thing. It's gonna be tough. You're gonna this have is, a hard time. <laughs> this is um this is the big one in Florida, right? This is this is the serious climb. This is the serious This is where they come serious. for the hill workouts and <sighs> I mean I've heard people talk about it, like they couldn't get up it, they had to walk. Um like I'm sure I could get up it, but it's you know we'll we'll see we if got we your can take this time. Twelve pound bike, thankfully. Yeah, that's gonna help. It's gonna help. Um, all right, so let's let's just do like a preview. This is this is the base. Um, at the top, what do you think? Like, what's the weather gonna be like? There's gonna be snow. I mean, it's been pretty cold this winter in Florida. We've had some crazy some crazy cold, wet days. What about, I mean, what about like know. what about like altitude? I'm not acclimated. Like I didn't do high altitude camp. It's not gonna be too high. You think like the air? You should be okay, but like, how do we... I've heard of of instances where it's been hard. And this is the top. Like it's not even a hill, and they didn't even make it to the top when they made the segment. They ended the segment early, because this is Florida, dude. Dude, the person that made this. Segment... I can't sprint. This is gonna be like this is gonna be like a minute and a half to get this. Okay, I'm gonna need a lead out.
the short one was hurt the most. I went way too early too. I went way too early. <laughs> like I had momentum, and I was like, that's the top right there. Like we just started, but it's already almost over. And then I, I died. I don't know if I got it either. This thing wasn't, it wasn't showing it, but we'll find out. Let's get the, where's the gut? He's somewhere over there. It hurts, man. It hurts. Like, it's so short. Oh. A pill sprint, bro. God, I hope I, I don't know if I, I don't think I got it. You like, got impatient. Well, I had momentum. I, I was going trying into the to wheel. hold. Yeah. I, I knew it was like a long way to that mailbox, like we talked about. So I wasn't trying to go too hard at the bottom. Yeah. And you just left well, me in the dirt. there was two. There was two mailboxes. You should have been like, "Hey, I'm going." And then I would have yeah. stood up and sprinted for like ten minutes, for for like ten seconds, and then you could have gone. No, it's totally true. That would have been a crucial. So. I just like the thing is the way I was coming in. You were like saving gas, so I had some speed. I was just going into your wheel. Yeah. Next and time, like, just yell, "Go, go, go!" Yeah. We'll see if if you didn't get it, we can try again. No. No, I'm not trying again. The the, record, the previous time was 125, 118, buddy, 118. <laughs> sweet, sweet victory. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Who's the sprinter. Oh, that's so hurts. <laughs>